Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, wherever you are. In my case, it is very late at night, raining a little bit, and maybe in the faint distance you can hear cars. By now, I hope that you've already watched our documentary, The Cats of the Faculty of Biology. If you have not, I will post a link in the description and you can watch it. Uh, it would be beneficial to watch it before watching this video. Today we're going to do a breakdown and director's commentary of the video and uh, we're going to watch it through and I will pause it as many times as necessary which will be probably many many times and I will discuss maybe the issues that we had in certain parts, uh, some of the stylistic choices we made or necessary decisions we made, see where we could have done things better. And I do find this to be a very beneficial process of actually going through it and catching where you could have done things better so that next time you can, without going on too much, let's begin. Yes. Okay. The indecision. I will just quickly discuss here the cold open. And initially we had three ideas here, which was this one, uh, directly starting with Ruri, uh, the main interviewee in the video, a part where he is uh, already uh, introducing uh, himself and what he's doing, or just directly starting with the opening credits and, and going on. And uh, in the end, we went with this one, which is a funny cold open and uh, also bookending it with another outtake. And I think this was the appropriate one to start with to, to give it the tone that we would want, which is uh, even later when it gets uh, emotional, at least I think it gets emotional, uh, we still start off with the fact that, you know, it's still, the cats are adorable and, and funny things happen and and we go into the fact that uh, funny things happen. And during the process of making it, we, there were a lot of little things that went wrong, but in an actually amusing way. And in this case, I accidentally kicked a rock or a piece of fruit or whatever and hitting Kun Kun in the back. And, and this is Karama. And uh, actually uh, hitting Kunkun in the back, and he's now disturbed by it. I feel so bad. As you can see, we have an issue here of me annoying the cats. And uh, yeah, so I think this is the appropriate one to start with the fact that. Uh, Actually, we did have quite a bit of trouble, if, especially if you get to the, the last last shot after the credits uh, where, where uh, I had to deal with the fact that I would do the part and then uh, Ket would not be there. In this case, I was annoying Kun Kun. And uh, I just want to subtly point out the quick look at the camera and then it cuts to black. And then we actually start with the, with the, the accordion and giving the title uh, the use of the accordion was actually if we could I would have actually gotten someone to perform entire sections on the accordion because I I, I wanted to have the accordion in the, the documentary as the, the focal piece of music. Um, why specifically the accordion? Uh, something about the vibe of the shots that we got just seemed to fit with, with an accordion. And uh, even though the music we did end up using later, uh, beautiful music, uh, totally worked. Uh, but in my mind, initially, I was thinking like, okay, uh, I really like the, the accordion vibe, uh, 
something about cats and accordions. I don't know what it is. Uh, the especially nice, soft, not too upbeat, not too fast accordion music. Uh, if you got a slow tempo like here, maybe it just it sounds lazy in a way, and uh, cats being lazy, you know, nice. It it fits the mood. Uh, gives off a, an evocative, melancholic feel, maybe as well. So, just seemed to fit. And I looked through FMA, the Free Music Archives, and through Free Sound. I ended up getting the accordion music from Free Sound, and I could only get these two pieces that really fit. And so after that, I had to start looking elsewhere. And so, we start with the accordion music, which I would have loved to have throughout. Uh, just to keep some thematic consistency, but we actually could not find, and I cannot get someone to perform it, so we may do it with, with what we had, but yeah, I think uh, at least to start it with the accordion music, it's, it's, to me it's perfect. I love the shot with the cat looking at us, and uh, one of the twins, and then uh, Uwe Yer, or Owe, I keep getting corrected on how to say her name. And to me, I, I think she's kind of the star of the documentary, uh, certainly the most photogenic cat. Just looking at the traffic, a little bit of foreshadowing. And uh, this really, the shot does actually set up the, the context of the documentary, of the fact that she's looking at the traffic, which I then discuss later. The Faculty of Biology of University of Saskatchewan I did this part is multiple home times. to a variety of I don't animals. think I ever got it right. Herons and other birds, civet. Uh, stilted, uh, maybe. Carmel is watching along with me. Uh, you know, uh, the sound, we could also discuss the sound. And, and I, I went through the sound quite a few times, uh, trying to remove noise. And part of the filming was with the Magic Lantern firmware, which is something that should have been used from the beginning because without it and the microphone, uh, we were just getting lots of noise. And with Magic Lantern, it actually fixed that one issue where we were not getting that noise and then the results were better. But here initially, if you can hear it, you can, if you don't, I apologize for introducing you to this little bug, I would call it, but something that I, I, I did work on trying to, to fix. And later on, I think it would be more prevalent to me, but at least initially it was something that I was noticing and trying to improve. The occasional dog. That little nose crinkle there is because I'm not very comfortable in glasses, and uh, there I, I just I, I did it subconsciously, and uh, it ended up in the shot, and it's something that I will forever see because it's just unavoidable, and uh, just something that you know, due to my nose being slightly skew due to a childhood mishap, uh, glasses they never sit well on my nose, and so I I. I'm just uncomfortable with it. And so that twitch there is there. And it's something that uh, is unavoidable and just there. Lots of mosquitoes. And of course, cats. <laughs> uh, again, uh, that's also the perfect shot. Uh, I did get one where she is there. And no, this was the right one. Uh, Again, setting up the mood. And cats are like that. They're unruly. And, and especially Bessie, who uh, I refer to as the Queen Bessie. Uh, that was the appropriate uh, one to use, actually. The fact that she just, she just walked away in the middle of the take. <laughs> Bessie, Ui, Kun Kun. This shot, we can discuss the, the, the color balancing. Not really color balancing, just a lot that we used and then fixing the lighting. Initially, the shot was quite dark and to keep with the accordion theme this this feeling of, of slight melancholy uh, but also nostalgia and this was a perfect one the, the this tweed 
and and it just uh, gave everything this glassy look that I think really suited the that really suited the the look of the the documentary and and you can see the original and without fixing the brightness it's a bit dark uh, we add some brightness there uh, using curves just instead of doing it directly and so first to make it lighter and uh, to make him pop better and then using this lot in general it's kind of a lazy solution to just use a certain lot and then move on from there but at this point uh, editing for months and uh, me just focusing on many little things I'm, you know we're trying to be efficient here and you can see that it adds this this brown hue with and without it's it's blue and then it just it just gives it this lovely nostalgic feel to me and 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 that's how we ended up with this the shot year very bright but also Kunkun is actually popping K-pop, Simba, and a whole array of visitors ones. come by or stay here. <laughs> Many of them are rescues. This one is Others out of focus. Here. If you look subtly. <laughs> this, now, we use two lenses for this. The 17-85 and then one that's a 200 milliliter lens. This is the 200 milliliter, millimeter lens. And this is the 200 millimeter one. And I think if you pay attention, you can see these different lenses that are being used. And... Uh, to me, it is actually slightly incongruent because the 200 milliliter one is, is I keep saying milliliter, millimeter one. Uh, it's a really nice lens and uh, we get to really focus and, and, the, and the background can be nice and, and blurry. And uh, if you are paying attention, it's also something that you notice the, the different lenses. But uh, yeah, I mean, it works, and uh, in this case, it was a totally I caught up with one. Ruri, a lecturer at the faculty who... No. Along I can quickly, if you pay attention to my <laughs> my breast area, there's a hot pixel there, and early shots, again, had hot pixels. This is something that was also featured in the previous uh, video we did, which is the, the previous one we shot, actually, which was a peer review one, and there were hot pixels there as well, and... For whatever reason, I couldn't get rid of them. And then in the second half of shooting, hot pixels are gone. And uh, yay, <laughs> uh, that was that. And uh, problem solved. Yeah, there's hot pixel and uh, a bit tricky to remove them, I think. Uh, I know of a way to do it, but it, again, it would take some extra time that I think... We just could not really, I wouldn't say afford, but at this point, you know, we're getting up in time. Uh, I, I could not just be focusing on, on too many little things. So hot pixels, they ended up staying. The color balance as well. This one is more brown than the other shots. It's cloudy. Uh, we don't have the sun behind us. Something that as the the person making it as a person who enjoys cinematography something that i will notice is suddenly the fact that i'm in this location and the color is like this now i'm in this one in the next shot not technically the next shot but in terms of me talking the next shot suddenly it's it's different and it's it's also it's incongruent but it is what it is the sound as well now the sound was an issue and it's something that we had to overcome especially when later I'm exclusively doing the voiceover and you will notice there's a distinct difference in my sound because when I did the voiceover it's already almost a year later and uh, I had the luxury of, of coming close to the microphone uh, getting good sound out of that year the microphone is a little bit far and it's the sound is just different because I did the sound mastering myself I could not, uh, I could only rely on my own experience and knowledge and uh, ingenuity, as it were, uh, or lack thereof. And so we ended up with this result, uh, which, you know, for better or worse, is what it is. And uh, 
that just is how it's going to end up as. With his wife, Adib, provide food and shelter for the cats who make this campus their refuge against the harsh and busy world just across that gate. This is a, this kind of feels to me like a, a new story and uh, not really intentional, but just how it ended up being that I felt like uh, in editing that like, I felt like this was looking like I'm making some sort of news story or journalistic film and, and that's not really what it was meant to be, but yeah, it has that feel with the pointing and the accordion. I mentioned herons and if you pay attention in the to the trees there you, you will see some birds. This shot here was actually not with the Canon but with the Samsung Note because this was well after shooting we were just uh, at the faculty and saw some students feeding Kun Kun and asked if we could film them uh, just this one was a lucky one and the only thing we had was the the phone so we used that for shooting it this cat is not from the faculty of biology actually it's from the the adjacent faculty and uh, so technically should not I wouldn't say should not be in the documentary, but not actually part of the, the documentary. <laughs> this one is actually me filming Ruri talking to Lely. And so uh, you will never see the shot again. It's just, uh, but I, I thought it was just a good shot. Uh, nice framing, nice focus, nice light. So uh, yeah, we just pretend that it's part of the documentary and him actually talking to me. This one is me actually saying like okay this is what we're going to discuss now and uh, I, I just like it because of the lighting and the, the sun popping there random shot of an insect I love ferns this is a fern right here but I will point out that I did not I did not succumb to indulgence by having a random fern shot I did shoot some ferns but we did not put them into the documentary after I want to I uh, just brag a little bit about my my restraint. This is a nice shot, I think. The uh, that specific one with the green, the white over it. Uh, I wanted to have this specific framing, and uh, I didn't want to have any shadow on the on the titles, and so we needed a nice background. There was a previous one that we used which I did not think worked as well. And then when I came on upon this one, uh, just putting it together and experimenting, it fit really well. And, uh, and then we fade to black, uh, so you can see it properly. And then we fade back in uh, with the end of the music, uh, just fading and then focusing back on the foreground, which is a plant. And then Ruri talks over that, I thought was a nice transition actually. Cat in here, it's Owie and Pessy. Pessy. And I cut there because I was just going on and on. And I, yeah, I really like that transition because the word that I want to use is thoughtful. And that's how I wanted to treat this, the subject in a thoughtful way. And, uh, and I just thought that kind of meshing it together uh, really fit that well. The shot is not a great shot, Usually near the, the, and the parking lot. of course and the microphone is attached to the, the camera, so as soon as I'm moving the camera away from Ruri, his voice is uh, just, just uh, not really that audible. Yeah, not a great shot. Uh, if I could go back, I would definitely lift the camera, but you know, this was actually one of the first shots, and... Uh, yeah, I, I don't think this was a great introduction of Ruri, but in terms of atmosphere, I, I think it was the correct one. It's specific cat in the bottom left, always looking at the camera, multiple shots of him looking at the camera like that. And, and you wonder, well, what is he thinking? Uh, I will never know, but 
uh, a beautiful cat, always just very wary of the camera and, and me. That's why this is the homework to sterilize the female cat in Faculty of Biology. Mm. And now we, we start with my voiceover and uh, never again will we see my face not actually intentional. I wanted to go back and actually film myself saying these things. In the end, I think it was correct to do the voiceover just because of the, the fact that I was actually capturing my voice better. Yeah, I, I would have wanted to show my face just to have some continuity with the fact that in the beginning I did do that. Uh, in the end, I, you know, time is a factor, but also once I did it on the voiceover, I think it was, it felt better. And the introduction of the next piece of music, a very fast and upbeat one, light bopping about, I think suited the, the cats here. Who think they own them operate under the mistaken assumption that the endless treats and infinite headbats are voluntary, rather than the product of successful co-opting by feline them. Just look at Kun Kun here. <laughs> lording over his grassy plane. Uh, Kun Kun lording over his grassy plane. I, that was, uh, I, I was when I was writing the the script for the voiceover. I saw him there and uh, yeah, lording over his grassy plane. It's worth pointing out that the cat who is stalking a pigeon here, not actually Kun Kun. <laughs> Even so, like all of the cats you'll find around the university. This is a different cat. Actually, this shot was done much later and not actually for this documentary, but for Laylee's Ecology Bootcamp, a different video. So you would, if you've seen that video, then you will already have seen this cat. But again, in terms of the, the context, of uh, biology, great shot. There's Laylee giving her Ecology Bootcamp. And this is Iis. What Iis is doing there, she looks like she's she's uh, following along with the class. And mm, a little bit of a spoiler, but actually at this point, just for some context, Laylee had a boot camp for new students and each student got some lunch. And what Iis was following here was not her teaching. She was still teaching and the student was eating and, and she was paying attention to the smells of the food not actually to the to the you know to the lecture itself and happily accepting their endless treats and infinite head pads mm. i mentioned later the the impact the cats have on students and in hindsight i would have loved to make the documentary at least 10 minutes longer uh, to actually show this aspect more because it, it's an underrated aspect the fact that the students love the cats is is something that i didn't go into enough i wanted to interview more students actually but at this stage uh it was already in between semesters and everyone is at home we had trouble actually getting some uh because i think uh it was worth mentioning the fact that that really uh, unprompted the students were just feeding the cats and uh, and the students in this faculty actually do genuinely love the cats are abandoned have a safe place to go where people will take care of them even if they ultimately choose not to stay so this, uh, yeah. <laughs> the polite photo bomber uh, he saw me and uh, decided he doesn't want to be anywhere near the shot <laughs> in, in this faculty mm -hmm. and then they can survive here. Actually, we also try to manage the population and then... I, I want to comment. This is Lily shot and, uh, you know, when you're filming uh, something like a documentary, I'm not super experienced at it, so I'm not going to pretend that I'm an expert, but, you know, sometimes, uh, you know, you want to get good lighting and you can... We can go and stand in a specific place uh, where the sun is and then we try to get a good shot out of it. And here, you know, Lely was pretty perfect. Uh, focus is on Nuri. We have a little bit of kind of like a three-point lighting thing uh, where you can see his entire frame is, is lit. 
and uh, so he you know he stands out from the background this is just the perfect shot he's in focus he's well lit and uh, in terms of the framing of the shot everything is is there perfectly so all all the credit to Lely on this shot already sterile and then uh, in UKM also have Kuching UKM you can check the uh, Instagram they also have a good program like uh, street feeding and then sterilizing the uh, cats in all area in UKM and mostly yeah that is if you notice on the right side there that is in fact is Kuching UKM is a uh, I'm not sure exactly how they run, but, <clears throat> but they are basically grassroots, and uh, they are, I do believe it is mainly student involvement, and they, they are basically exclusively about helping the cats around the the entirety of, of UGM. Uh, we mentioned them here, and, uh, you know, don't, they, they're not really involved in the documentary, but when Ruri mentioned them, I think it was worth highlighting them uh, because they are an important aspect of, of, I would say, the cat lovers of the university. First, uh, for the female, I think a bit uh, effort to do that. And when they have uh, kittens, we also manage the uh, open adopt program. So, <coughs> so Ruri mentioning the fact that uh, if they can, they do have the cats adopted because uh he is caring for the cats him and and Lakshmi they love the cats but they still want the cats to have a, a nice home and so if if the cats can be rehomed they do actually try to do it but in my experience with caring for cats as well you know it's difficult to have certain cats homed because generally people would prefer to adopt a you know you know, a Persian cat or, or an expensive cat. And uh, if we have something like a, you know, Kuching Biasa, <laughs> uh, a normal cat, then uh, generally it's harder to get people to take them on because, you know, they want a fluffy, beautiful, flat-nosed cat. This would have been the original shot for the title. Uh, you can see the framing is nice. Uh, there would be a place to have the cats of the Faculty of Biology title right in the middle with the cats in the corner. But actually, uh, the other one was much better, and uh, I'm glad we use that that shot instead. Here run the full gamut of personalities. From my perceptions, we have the dour and serious Oe. Again, uh, to me. Uh, Oe is the the star of the show, and uh, if I had anticipated that fact, I would have featured her in more shots. But uh, she has such a, a beautiful face. I, I I said she's a dour and serious Oe. In real life, she's a lot more lovable than than I'm projecting her to be. But uh, certainly, when she's looking at the camera, she's giving this vibe of 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 dourness and seriousness. The Queen Bessie. Many shots of Bessie enjoying strokes. The soft, important company. <laughs> Kun Kun is a very self-confident cat, and uh, yeah, I would say the self-important Kun Kun that actually applies. The playful twins. Technically, these are not the two twins. One of them is Kun Kun, but actually getting the two twins together. Just, so so adorable actually <laughs> again uh, a shy cat uh, saw the camera didn't want to investigate didn't want to just walk past uh, saw the commotion decided he wants no part of it instead turns around yeah. well these are just a few of them and inevitably but quite perfectly this now a few shots ago uh, actually, no, right before the polite photo bomber shot, we had music. And uh, right on the shot, as we cut, we also cut the music. And this was actually 
the appropriate thing was to stop th th that specific piece of music there and but then actually when we fade in and inevitably but quite perfectly there's no music this and uh, in the end i spent a day or maybe even two days longer than i should have just obsessing over the music and this is one example of that where i was basically going back and forth on whether to have the music also fade in uh, what music to use that was uh, Lely and I debated it uh, actually and uh, which one to use uh, I wanted to keep it as a jazz song but one that was actually slower tempo because a fast one would not work uh, even using music at all changes the the I would say it changes the context it changes the mood and the feel of the of the the shot and the scene so later on when Ruri is speaking having really fast jazz music uh, totally did not work and uh, in fact I even lowered it so that the focus is more on Ruri talking and here uh, I was thinking you know should I have the music come in as the shot comes in uh, and in fact no we waited yeah so the, it comes in, and this is Jesse Spillane's song, and it comes in right before the cut, and uh, so that instead the music is now introducing the interview section, and before that it's just you're only hearing the atmosphere and my voice. You know, I, a perfectionist will obsess over the most minute things that a normal person, and normal in the sense of the viewer, might not ever notice, and... Uh, in this case, I am that kind of person and spending way too much time on, on a part that did not need it. So this is the first student, Annie. We had her speak in English and Bahasa Indonesia and uh, we were cognizant of the fact that if a Western audience is watching this, it would have been better to have someone actually speaking in English, so you don't need to read subtitles. But when we did it in English and, and in Indonesian, she was far more confident speaking in Indonesian. So we decided that, yeah, we should have her speak in her native language. And, uh, you know, if you don't like reading subtitles, you've got to deal with it. If you don't like foreign movies, you've got to deal with it. Because in the end, it was actually the correct decision as well. Uh, have her speak in her native language and uh, actually be confident when she's speaking. So, just a reference again to the, the sun. Uh, a simple thing, the shot is not really in focus. It's a little bit of a Dutch angle. Uh, uh, although it's also a little bit of an illusion because I'm shorter than Murray, but... When you've got the sun behind you like this uh, and it's not causing too much trouble, just a nice shot to have. That's just a great shot of Ui there. Uh, just some cutesy uh, heart SVG over her heart shape there. Uh, the only time you see me being really cute, uh, except for the arrows of the polite photobomber, we don't come back to this again. And you can see all the mosquitoes, or just other insects. I, I want to point out that uh, I said before that Ruri loves the cats, but uh, we cannot, I, I cannot understate how much he and his wife, who we don't see her, but because uh, she's very shy. I think if you're paying attention and you're watching and the way he looks at Bessie, you know that uh, he genuinely loves these animals. And, you know, I could only say that through the shot and and you know here we're lingering on this shot and uh, the fact that she's just uh, <laughs> chillaxing and uh, 
I, I really, I just, I, I think it's worth emphasizing the fact that uh, uh, I would say he feels obligated on an ethical basis, but, you know, they're not obligated in any other way to take care of these animals. They just do it because they, A, love animals, and B, they, they love the cats. I think this is actually an interesting transition because uh, the question was whether to have titles in between scenes, sort of introducing each section, and instead we have uh, we have the sound of the motorbike passing, the shot, you know, looking at the cats, and that's the transition, uh, starting with the fade from. Ruri looking at Bessie to showing the animal house and so instead of having titles introducing the next part we're just relying on sound and uh, yeah I could say that fade and, and the movement of the shot. I will slightly point out the fact that uh, the, the lens was dirty there. Not a great shot either that was actually the very first shot that, uh, that we filmed. So we also think about the cleaning area and then uh, mostly the, the cats if we fit in near the, the builders building the cats from the out of focus as well but had to use the shot uh really discussing where he's feeding the cats saying uh you know having a, a clean feeding area uh i think this is maybe a boring thing uh, you know, there's no drama in what he's saying. He's just describing something very routine and mundane, I think. But I actually thought that it was valuable to include this context because, uh, you know, later on when I discuss maybe, uh, you know, there are some people who hate the cats, it's true that people are actually annoyed by cats and their presence and they just don't like cats. And they can consider cats dirty Caramel. and they can consider they can they consider cats dirty because they're they're making a mess wherever they are and and as well as where they eat so you know uh, i think it's 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 important to actually add some context there and say that you know you know Ruri's feeding the cats but he's also making sure that they're not disturbing the environment around them and uh, potentially annoying other people around the faculty who don't like cats. The geography faculty also uh, join in the Just pointing out the fact that uh, this is a documentary about the cats of the faculty of biology, but uh, there are cats that are, you know, from the adjacent faculties that are also uh, being fed because, hey, there's food there and they're also going to want to eat. Uh, make more crowded and the Biology cats uh, not have enough food. Subtle, subtle thing, if you listen. Enough food. And then another, like it's a frog. Uh, that's just me trying to make sure that, uh, you know, to, to fix some noise. And so I just took a little clip, edited it later again. Uh, something that yeah, you might never notice if you're not, you know, paying attention to the sound, but now you're going to notice it. Uh, it's just a subtle repetition of the sound uh, because I just copy-pasted the, the clip so that uh, I could replace something else. Basically, myself and my wife... Yeah, just commenting on the, on the noise issue again. The camera was far here. If I could do the shot again, first thing I would do is I would put the microphone, you know, right near him, or maybe I get someone to operate the boom, but you know, I, I don't, I, you know, I could not hire someone to do that. So yeah, first thing we could have done is just put the microphone nearer to him so that we could get some, some proper sound. But here the, the, uh, the microphone is, is the, the microphone is, the microphone is, uh, you know, on the, the camera and the camera is a bit far. So, uh, yeah, the sound quality is just not great. Maybe the, uh, in terms of being able to hear Ruri, the, uh, the, the worst uh, in terms of quality.
Laksmindra also like cats and uh, we feed them here because if we saw cats uh, for getting them. enough food, it's like uh, what what a pity for them. So it's uh, cruel to to let them. Uh... Rory said cruel there, and uh, that was something that he emphasized, and that's something that I think is also worth emphasizing here. Uh, the fact that uh, he does see it as as a cruelty against cats if you have the opportunity to help them and you decide not to. And that's, uh, you know, just, uh, you can say the, the, the old saying that evil prevails when, when good men do nothing. And that's his perspective, that if you can do good, you should do good. Hopefully. There's the, oh, oh, again, I was fixing a piece of audio. Hmm? Besides the moral imperative, and uh, actually Lely and Ruri were, were talking when I was taking that shot, and uh, this is a mistake on my part where I also copy pasted them talking. So you can just randomly, if you know what they are saying, you can just randomly hear them saying the same thing twice, and that's just because I, uh, in editing, made a mistake and accidentally also copied them talking. Ruri also cites a religious reason for helping cats. The uh, uh prophet of Muhammad also like uh, cats. That's uh, the, the ultimate thing that uh, we also uh, love cat as uh, animal that the prophet also uh, like. So it's, it's about caring. The, the religious aspect I think is also worth mentioning. In terms of the audience, I think that uh, a Westerner watching this would perceive this uh, this moral reason that he gives differently from, let's say, an Indonesian watching. Of course, to an Indonesian who might uh, likely be Muslim, they will be uh, viewing it in that way. Uh, someone who maybe does not like exhortations to religion uh, would not like this reason. I thought it was still important to include it because it is part of his motivation, uh, the fact that because the Prophet loved cats, you know, you as a Muslim can say that, uh, you know, if it's, if it's, if cats are good enough for him, then they should be good enough for you. And so, uh, yeah, uh, the fact that, uh, uh, you know, he thought it was uh, important, uh, you know, a, a Western audience might not find this aspect as interesting uh, but still important to add. Caring for for uh, the, the other uh, living thing, so uh, it's a good fit for uh, cats that live in in Pyrenees. The reality for many of the cats in the Faculty of Biology, and UGM in general, is that they were at some point unwanted and discarded. Many times, people who purport to just mentioning the fact that these cats are abandoned and uh, either from when they're kittens they are just uh, left there or some of them maybe even as adults because they're sick uh, you know it does happen that you know you, you've got an adult cat that is sick you don't want to deal with it so you just leave them somewhere who love animals will give up on them lose interest or don't want to take care of them once they become sick. There are also those who just hate cats altogether and refuse to tolerate their presence. For I, I sounded a bit forceful when I said they, they hate cats altogether and, and refuse to tolerate them. I, you know, I, that, that's an important part to emphasize, the fact that, uh, you know, there are people who, some people love cats, genuinely love cats, other people just don't care and then there are people who also genuinely hate cats and uh, for whatever reasons they have it means that these cats are in danger uh, if, if these people want to do something malicious then uh, these cats are in danger because uh, those type of people do exist and I, I 
I think I was correct in being so forceful in the way I said it. For every such individual, however, there are count. Now, just to briefly discuss the music, the guitar comes in loud here, and we had uh, this uh, a great song. Uh, I mixed two songs together, but and it comes in and and uh, it comes in a little bit as a surprise, I think, but. It's such a beautiful piece of music that coming in like that, I thought, you know, it, it gave some good emphasis to what I was saying. Plus more who not only love them, but find comfort in their presence. People, students, and uh, some of the staff, and some of my friends who visit me in this faculty also, uh, some and then we transition to the next uh, piece of music so that I can bring the first one back later. Yeah, it, it's... Again, if we could make this longer, I would have... When I say there are people who love them and I'm showing you a shot of the students, it's, it's because it's true and... Uh, and uh, it's really an underrated aspect, the, the impact that an animal can have on a human being. I should just point out the fact that uh, this is Laylee cleaning Bessie, and uh, Laylee is very good at cleaning cats. If you pay attention, you'll see some fur flying. <laughs> and this is Andra, the second student we interview. Salah satu hewan yang memiliki peran penting seperti itu di hidup saya karena ya ketika saya bertemu dengan kucing saya berubah menjadi sosok yang kekanak-kanakan gitu karena entah kenapa uh, I'm not great at, at uh, moving the camera around and I think you can see uh, the the way it zooms out a little bit jittery that's not my forte what we call to relieve the stress like in in my opinion if I saw cat because I, I like I like cat. When we, we like we love uh, animals, some some experts say that it can relieve stress also. It's worth emphasizing. I accidentally just nodded along with myself again. The the stress the stress relief aspect of it again. I would have loved to actually go into more more of it there. The cats have on students. Animals have a calming and uplifting influence on humans. But when you're in a high-stress environment, this effect... No. Uh, I'm randomly proud of this aspect. When the cat rolls over, there's a nice piece of music that also rolls alongside. But when you're in a high-stress environment, this effect can be amplified. <laughs> Every student... Pure indulgence. Uh, I don't think it really... Uh, it doesn't really change anything, uh, but just... It's a, an indulgence that I enjoy. Simple but effective contribution. Cats but uh, in terms of the shot, also a good shot. Mentioning the students and then focusing on the students to, to highlight what I'm saying. This is the one shot there. The one part where you actually notice cutting in between the same. And uh, it's just a stylistic thing. I personally don't like it. And... Uh, and this that's the one where you can see it and I thought it was fine to have that one because it's if you're focusing on Andra then you're not really going to notice it but if you're focusing on the plants behind them then you're definitely going to notice it uh, bisa serotonin, dopamine dan lain sebagainya dan juga dapat menekan uh, si hormon stress ataupun, or, ataupun kortisol yang bisa kita ketahui kucing sangat... Uh tantangan akademik, beban akademik, dan juga beberapa urusan yang, yang lainnya yang membuat kita mungkin pernah gitu ya selama di, 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 di fakultas ini ketika mungkin keluar dari gedung di fakultas uh, biologi ini dan kita tidak sangat yang melihat kucing terus kita now. bermain dengan kucing-kucing ini uh, ada perasaan apa ya uh, stres yang kemudian hilang gitu kita uh, yeah, that cat was naughty and you can see that that any is uh, trying not to get herself scratched here tiba bisa melupakan ban itu focus, dan but, uh -huh. uh, merasa apa ya uh, meningkatkan mood kita gitu untuk menjalani aktivitas dalam yeah. kesehari. And I think just to go back to the issue of noise, uh, uh, when I was doing the sound editing, I, I had my big headphones on and I was hearing every single flaw and uh, just going mad with every single one. Uh, these interviews already I was using Magic Lantern 
uh, firmware so we actually got good sound out of it and I didn't have to worry too much about it Ya, gitu dengan ya secara tidak sengaja melihat kucing-kucing itu karena tingkah lucunya ataupun uh, apa ya tingkah polosnya gitu. Dan juga dengan keberadaan kucing membantu mahasiswa seperti saya yang uh, memiliki banyak tekanan. The both students mentioned the pressures they experienced and you know everyone who's been a student can empathize with it and uh, but I think the way Andre describes it, the the impact that the cats can have again is real, and uh, just I I keep coming back to it because I think you know uh, something so simple but effective. Just like I said in in the voiceover, it's simple but effective. The fact that having a good environment around the students can actually benefit them. Akademik ataupun organisasi ataupun hal lainnya ketika kita berkucing, seketika kita lupa dengan semua tekanan tersebut dan secara tidak langsung. <laughs> He is again. Yeah, just before we continue, uh, we started off with the accordion music having this feeling of, of melancholy and uh, just maybe a hint of it. But now, when we're coming into this part, uh, I was very purposefully using David's music here. And the the second song is more hopeful. The first one is, is I think, very powerful. And uh, as we're leading into the the ending, uh, it it has some weight to it. And the solo guitar... Just like the solo accordion, you know, it's having its own mood and, uh, you know, and I wanted to have specifically this, this having a solo guitar, not, not having, you know, busy music, but just, just this little twinge of something in the background, uh, just, just supplementing what they are saying. I think it's, it's, uh, it's strange that if, for example, if, if we saw people or, or human that uh, not enough food so uh, we give our food for them but how about the, the animal? Rory said it a second time how about the animals and uh, I appreciate the fact that he repeated himself just to, to, to make that point more forceful and uh, emphasizing the fact that uh, you know animals kind of get a raw deal when it comes to priority. How about the animal? They also need uh, food if we have uh... a note on the framing if we could do the shot again besides having the microphone closer to him having it in in focus uh also moving him so that the animal house sign is not actually behind him but maybe uh let's say in the the top left corner could have thought through on the shot better but uh yeah food and we can feed them why not jadi dengan probably should have had a better transition year and pure luck they they both said why not uh, Ruri ended his part saying why not and Andre ended his part saying why not uh, that's not really intentional in the editing that's just how it ended up this is foreshadowing now uh, the rumor that the cats might be rid of. This is also, she's also saying something that Ruri will say later about the, the life that you find in the faculty. I, I will say one thing. Uh, some things in Indonesian are not really easily translatable into English. So when we write in the subtitle, it maybe sounds correct in Indonesian, but sounds a bit funny in English. And, and I think this was one part where uh, what she's saying uh, maybe uh, comes off better in Indonesian than in English. But, uh, you know, she's still... Uh, when we're writing the subtitle, and, and Leili was doing that part, and then I was cleaning it up, and uh, I, I would say that 
uh, we don't want to undermine what they're saying, so we have to kind of, you know, be honest to what they're saying. And uh, if it doesn't sound super smooth, that's just the reality of it. Daripada mereka itu harusnya kita jaga. And uh, the students laughing. I think that was a nice touch. Uh, not on my part. They just happened to be laughing, and uh, just to emphasize the the fact that the uh, their kun kun is doing something funny and they're just appreciating it. The worst case-nya mereka sampai mati karena kita tidak menolong mereka. Apa yang akan kita berikan kesaksian? This is just Andra, like Marie mentioned about the prophet loving cats. Uh, Andra is also referencing the afterlife, which is again it's religious motivation, but still in Indonesia that's an important motivation. Nya ketika kita um, di akhirat nanti. Nah, bagaimana ketika kita menolong kucing-kucing uh, yang ada di sekitar kita? So the shot is a call back hati. to Hal tersebut merupakan perbaikan yang tidak ternilai. The music. And again, instead of having a title, uh, using the music to actually indicate that now we're transitioning into another section. And uh, in this case, uh, a nice touch syncing the music up with the cat lying on his head. And finally, opposite the animal house is the Kebun Bialagi, a small patch of woodland that has had several paths cut through it for walking. Crucially, it is also a buffer for the animal house. I am not a fan of actually cutting when I said crucially. Uh, only noticed that in hindsight, providing a cooling effect and shielding animals from the noise and danger of traffic. Uh, I took a lot of shots. In total, we had 265 shots, thereabouts. And there's a lot of shots of vegetation that, uh, you know, ended on the metaphorical cutting room floor. Though less common, Ruri also reports finding dogs who have been abandoned here. Sometimes we also visited by dogs. Yeah, the dogs are an interesting one. Uh, I've never seen them, but, you know, people believe that the dogs also kill the cats. I don't know about that. Dogs can be a, a tricky issue uh, in Indonesia, so it's... Uh, he doesn't know what happened to the dogs, and uh, it's it's possible something bad also happens to them, but we just don't know. And uh, same thing, like some cats disappear, they might just find a new place to go to, or something can happen to them, we, we just don't know. But the, the condition is not very good. I think the dogs also abandon and uh, live in the hutan biologi for several time and then uh, it disappeared it's not coming anymore why, why do you think the dogs don't yeah just like Ray says it the dogs disappear we, we don't know what happens to them when i feed the cats uh, at that time it was come closer and closer and then uh, join the party do the dogs fight with the cats or? Uh, no, the, 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 the dogs usually with the cat feeders and then uh, the dog eats the leftover of the cats. It, it takes turn. So Now, uh, this is also not an optical zoom, it's, it's just done in, in post. But the fact that uh, we're zooming in on him, you know, it just because we're going to lead into the final part now and the final message, uh, I wanted to zoom in on Ruri and just have a very subtle hint of, of the fact that, uh, I don't want to say sadness, but the reality, because before I mentioned the reality for the cats here, uh, you know, it's the reality for the dogs. It's the reality for all of the animals that, you know, end up being abandoned. And it's something that weighs on Ruri's mind, the fact that, you know, someone needs to take care of them. If they're abandoned, if they're sick, if they're small, if they're young. So it's something that weighed on him and uh, this just adding this little zoom here, I think, you know, it, it 
just it highlights the fact that Ruri really does care. Yeah, I think it's quite good. This is the, I think, kind of a story within the story. If you pay attention, uh, you see he is sitting here, looking at the traffic, exploring a little bit. Then later, you see her approached by Ruri. Just a little scene showing her exploring the faculty, walking around the faculty, and uh, from her perspective, you know, Iis is just uh, walking around the faculty and, and enjoying her time there. And then <laughs> looking at the camera again, again, uh, just that little vignette just showing E is walking around uh, to me, especially combined with the music, uh, which is by dilating times, it has some weight. And, and I think if you are on my emotional wavelength, then you would also feel that, you know, you would feel the weight of, of that part. And uh, we, we transitioned from having this upbeat jazz music to, to, I would say, now we're truly into the melancholia and, uh, you know, discussing the the fate of the cats, or well, hinting at it. No matter which animal it is that gets the help, one can only respect the efforts of lecturers like Ruri and Lakshmi, and organizations such as Kuching. Again, uh, incidental shot, uh, Ruri looking at, uh, I think in this case, Oe. Uh, in terms of, of what I am saying, uh, just saying the, the, the tone of my voice, the, the mood of the music, and then this shot of Ruri looking, we're not looking at his face, we are looking alongside him. We're, we're looking at him, looking at, at the cat while discussing him. I think this is just a really nice combination of, of everything. And it really emphasizes what we're saying. OGM who safeguard these furry little friends from the harshness that you'll find outside the campus and who are more than just eye candy to the students. And in the Faculty of Biology itself, there is a deeper resonance to their protection, as it is, after all, a faculty focused on the study of life. To this point, I will leave the final words with Ruri. Before we get to Ruri, uh, yeah, so really nice shot. Uh, I think the perfect shot at Early on in, in editing, this was the final shot, basically. Uh, I'm not uh, planning already on what the ending is going to look like, but I saw the shot. I was thinking like, okay, how am I going to you know, end it? And uh, this was just the shot. And all of the credit here goes to Lely as well. Basically following the cats and then revealing that the cats are following us. And... Uh, it's, it's to me, just in terms of the shot, it's, it's a beautiful shot actually. The capturing the not just the number of cats there, but the fact that uh, they're accompanying Ruri. They're not accompanying me, I, I'm accompanying Ruri as well. So they're basically accompanying Ruri, the person who cares for them. And uh, if you pay attention, one of them falls over. <laughs> I think it's, it is. So many wildlife in this. Uh faculty that I think it's it's quite good. <laughs> so yeah uh, it is being knocked over by Oe <laughs> oh, poor thing and uh, final point about the sound uh, I did the voiceover in a quiet room basically surrounded by a duvet to, to dampen sound and this is still the the audio from Ruri, and so we're still getting the background atmosphere. And in this case, no amount of fixing the audio could make it consistent with my voice. So when he comes in, there's also this burst of background noise that uh, something that I notice, other people might not, but I wish it could be better. I wish I could have done that better, but 
I'm not sure how I would. It, it was directly from him speaking. And, and I don't think it would have been appropriate to have him come, you know, into a studio and then recording that part because now it's no longer candid. It's not honest. It's uh, basically, it's pre-planned, it's canned. So I don't think that would have been appropriate. It's mostly like a sanctuary or something like that. Yeah, just just leaving it at that, and um, yeah, I think that was uh, just with the the cats there. Yeah. And uh, and this is uh, just a loop of traffic with no music. I I didn't want music to follow the final bit of music, so instead we're only getting a repetition of, of the atmosphere. And uh, just a final note on the tools, edited in KDN Live, open source program, the and uh, the sound done in Reaper. I'm, I'm grateful for their existence and then. I thought, where's the cat? And then the final shot. Uh, <laughs> uh, nice touch, I think, just ending it. Basically, it's bookended with the same shot and uh, both candid, funny moments. And, uh, you know, I love to have outtakes. Uh, I love the, the classic Jackie Chan movies where <laughs> I don't love the injuries, but I do love the, all of the bloopers and outtakes. And uh, so, you know, I think it's a nice way to end your documentary with uh, a blooper. Does it undermine the message? That's for you to say, but... Uh, this was a nice moment, I think. I was genuinely surprised. I was speaking and, uh, you know, <laughs> she just disappeared. <laughs> and that's it. Again, thank you for watching the documentary if you watched it already. If you have not, I hope you will. And uh, thank you for watching this breakdown and commentary i think in the end my big takeaway from it is that uh, many things that i that i and we could have done better if we had more time definitely could have done better i think that if if we had more if we had more time to publish it which of course yeah we we could but you know i wanted to release it sooner than later because in anything you do at least creatively there's always a wall that you have to overcome and, and the wall is that point where you think am i going to actually finish this thing you know or should i give up and uh you know do you want to cut your losses or not and and in this case it's we're basically you know i don't want to come to the wall and and fail to to climb over it and so, and so, uh, we don't want to prolong the process lest you actually fail to complete it. And so I would say, yeah, we, we could have taken more time with it, but I really did want to finish it. And, but if, you know, if we did have the mental and financial and uh, I would not say emotional, but maybe even the emotional luxury of of actually taking more time on it, not worrying about completing it. Uh, maybe could have added another 10 minutes to it and to make it breathe more, more space in between the interviews, more shots of the cats just playing or sleeping or eating or, or whatever, and... Uh, I would say breathing is a word, giving it more space to breathe, 
and maybe incorporating more interviews, talking to more students, because we did talk to students, but not on camera. And so when I say many of the students we spoke to, yeah, uh, any student we talked to about it loved the cats. And so, you know, we could have gotten more on camera to quote a former president to catapult the propaganda of, of how much the students love the cats. We could have made it a longer documentary and, and you know, I, I know someone did tell me that they thought the pacing was good at 20, you know, at 20 minutes that was good, but, you know, I love to indulge and I would have loved to indulge uh, a little bit more and actually having it breathe. Other than that, uh, better sound recording, uh, the the peer review video had sound issues here, I think still had sound issues. It's something that I hope with, with more time and experience we can improve, getting better sound recording out of it or having someone actually focus exclusively on it. Uh, the shots, some of the shots are not in focus. It is what it is. And uh, also something to, to improve. Uh, I would love to have released it a month before we did and the reason for that is because ultimately in the final stages of, of completion the cats were taken and uh, I think it's more appropriate for me to get into it with Ruri in a subsequent video but the cats were relocated and it was not his choice it happened basically when he was not there and uh, Again, we hint at it in the end, in the voiceover, and but you know, don't really go into it. I think that we could have actually paused the documentary there, shot more footage, talked to Ruri again, and then suddenly it would be a one hour long documentary. But that means it would have come out way later, and that's not something that we wanted to do. And it becomes about telling a different story. So it's not something that we, that, you know, we wanted to do. In terms of improvement, it would be that though. Uh, would have loved to release it sooner. Uh, would have loved to, you know, have more time just to edit, not on other things, but you know, it, but it is what it is. Uh, we can only work within what we have. On that note, uh, if you want to support the Synoptica project, uh, if you want to give us the opportunity to actually uh, focus more exclusively on these films, if you want to see more documentaries and if you want to see documentaries released sooner, uh, you can support the project and you can do it on Patreon, you can do it on Kofi, 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 I still don't know how to pronounce it, uh, you can do it on LibrePay, you can do it through Coil if that's something that you do you can do that as well for now those are the ways to do it and uh, you can contribute to us hiring people to help us that's one thing that that you know you can do so if you're willing and if you're desiring it you can support us on those platforms and uh, there will be links in the description that you can do that everything is appreciated and uh, everything is actually contributing directly to helping us and to helping the project. In the case of this documentary, I do think that the more people that watch it, the more people that share it, uh, we can perhaps contribute to having the cats return to the faculty, return to the direct care of Ruri and Lakshmi and even the students. So I do think sharing the documentary actually does matter. It does actually have an impact. It, 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 will help the cats, I, I believe. So, you know, if, if you can share it, please do. And uh, hopefully it can have an actual viable impact. It's not just about views in this case, it, it actually can, can affect something if it puts pressure on, on whoever took the cats and then to have them returned. On that note, quite a sad note, but again, I hope, uh, you got an extra insight into the making of it and uh, 
We will see you again next time. If you want to see what is below me, let's see if you can see.